Kaffir boy in autobiography written by Mark Mathabane is set in South Africa's apartheid. Mark is a young boy who is growing up in Alexandra, a township in South Africa, along with his expanding family. As he grows up, he goes through the journey of youth with the struggles of family and poverty. Mark learns to break from the apartheid, a system that was established to separate whites and blacks. He chooses to follow his own destiny by using his developing skills of tennis and education. Here are some important events that contribute to the shaping of Mark's life and where he is now. The first event is when he is introduced to school and education. My mother began dropping hints that I would soon be going to school. I vowed to never go because school was a waste of time. He dislikes school so much and wishes he could never go back because he is often punished for not having his uniform, books, or school fees paid. But Mark soon finds that he is indeed very smart and stays on top of the class. Mark then discovers his love for reading books. His grandmother starts to bring him comic books and he enjoys them a lot. Then one day she brings him books that were not familiar to him, like Pinocchio and the fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm. Mark was very fascinated and his interest in school, books, and learning grew immensely. Soon after, his grandmother takes him to where she works. Mark meets Mrs. Smith, who is the boss of his grandmother. Mrs. Smith introduces tennis to him. When Mrs. Smith gave me an old wood tennis racket one Saturday after I had done what she called a splendid job in cleaning her silver and brassware and shining Mr. Smith's half a dozen pair of shoes, I was already beginning to get bored with soccer. Before that, he only knew of soccer and little of tennis. But when Mrs. Smith gives the tennis racket to him, he is in a whole new world that would forever change his life. When Mark's tennis skills soon begin to improve, he starts to compete and meet many other well-known players, one which includes Stan Smith, who is one of the world's greatest serve and volley players. Mark admires and looks up to him so much, and one day, to his surprise, Mark comes face to face with him. Stan Smith, as he dried his face, looked me up and down and saw that I was in a tennis scarf and had my racket with me, and he said, would you like to hit some? Stan Smith soon becomes an important part of Mark's life after that. Mark's lifelong dream is to leave Alexandra. He wants to go study and play tennis in America. With the help of mentors, coaches, and Stan, this dream is achieved. He has received a full tennis scholarship from the Limestone College in South Carolina. A central theme throughout this novel is identity. Mark's identity is put to the test when he is faced with his father, whites, and life-threatening situations. A part in this book that shows just how far he has come with his struggles is when he told Mr. Monsisi about his scholarship to America. I always knew you would end up going to America, he said. Is that so? You're an unusual type, he said. You believe in yourself. That's what we blacks as a nation need, faith in ourselves. We believe too much of what the white man tells us about ourselves, and the results of that have been disastrous. Whites are running our country. It is an important part because even though Mark was faced with a series of problems that caused him not to believe himself, he conquered them itself and the system of apartheid. Mark is reminded that he has truly followed his own destiny and created his own path despite the challenges he was faced with. A current event that can sadly connect to the Kaffir boy today is the statistics and reports of South Africa. There is a required investigation of a mine in South Africa. Their statistics show that many of the living conditions have not improved and continue to get worse for the workers. One of the fundamental issues arising from the Marikana Commission of Inquiry relate to the perilous living conditions of the miners, which the commission declared to be a crisis. This can connect to Kaffir Boy because many workers often live in a way that is not safe. Conditions on the potato farm and the Bethel area where black prisoners were often taken to relieve overcrowded jails in Johannesburg and provide a cheap labor for white farmers were described as inhumane. This article also talks about the people's living condition. 
There are many citizens who are being pushed back into rundown neighborhoods due to a renovation of other places. This is how the apartheid had started. Many working black citizens were being placed into cities that do not give them any justice. Working class people, mainly black, are pushed further into shanty towns and the abandoned cities just as they were in the apartheid era. This is just how Mark grew up in the shack, which was like a ruin and did not have many of the bare necessities. The Alexandra of my childhood and youth was a shanty town of mostly shacks and a few decent houses, a lot of gutters, and lots of unpaved potholed streets. Another report in this article states that black students are less likely to graduate from a university and will have more difficulty in getting a job. It is twice as difficult for a black or colored graduate to get a job as it is for their white and Indian colleagues graduating from the same university. In Kaffir Boy, many kids are not able to continue their studies and stay in school because of money problems. I was fast arriving at the point where many a black child, eager to continue learning, had to drop out because parents could not afford school fees, books, and uniforms.